I truly do appreciate you tuning into this episode. I really wanted to take this time to let you know that we are making moves on this channel and it's all because of you guys. So I do appreciate you guys liking, commenting, and sharing it with everybody that you possibly can. As I've said, I've, I'm have i trying to get more people on this podcast. We already had average on this podcast. Great conversation. I'm trying to get more content creators, more gamers, so we can really talk about gaming and make a real impact. I've also reached out to people like Turtle Beats, and they actually ended up sending me this. And they also sent me a new headset. So without you guys, this kind of stuff wouldn't be possible. I'm trying to upgrade my whole area to be able to get you guys the best content possible possibly move out of this area this room and actually create a real studio for it for you guys so that it actually looks more professional i'm trying my best thank you so much for supporting the channel and let's get back to the podcast i was watching a video the other day and it made me realize that the call of duty community will never ever be happy now this does not go for everyone but i do want to say the majority of us will never be happy with no matter what call of duty no matter what activision does no matter what Treyarch does no matter what sledgehammer does no matter what infinity ward does probably even microsoft at this point okay and i made a video on tiktok about this so if you follow me on tiktok you'll see a little short about this it's a little over a minute so it's not really a short but you'll see kind of my shorter form of this whole podcast right to start off, I wanted to say that in that short, in which I'm going to show you a video, not my short, just a different video of the reason why I thought about this video topic and the reason why I think that the Call of Duty community will, will never be happy no matter what happens, right? Essentially, my example here, my main physical example that I could think of offhand and that, I, that, I, that solidified this whole thing was Warzone 1 and Warzone 2. Now, what do I mean by that? Warzone 1 was a fast-paced, like, you know, looter-shooter type of game. Not looter-shooter, but you get the point. It was a very fast-paced game. It, it started out slow, but then over time, around a few months, maybe five, six months, it started to become very, very quick. The slide canceling got introduced. It had the, the you know, vomit loot and whatever else. Warzone 2 started out very slow-paced, very Battle Royale-like, how Battle Royales were started. Now, there's an argument to be made that not everything should stay the same. And I completely understand that. I am on that side. I don't think everything should always be the same. I think there should be things that should change and whatever else. So, Warzone 1 was actually a good change to the Battle Royale scene. Black Ops, Bla uh, Blackout, and, and Black Ops. Blackout was a huge change to, to the scene and made a great game out, out of the Battle Royale fr fr franchise. Now, that might just be an opinion, right? But my main point here is we went from Warzone 1, right? Everybody was like, we need to change. We need this thing to change. This stuff has to get better. What are you going to do about it? Why? I'm so bored of it. I'm so, I can't take this any anymore. Then Warzone 2 comes out and Activision says, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll change some shit. Then you all bitch about how like how slow it is, about how you can't slide cancel anymore, about how they're hiding stuff, and then how they're 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 catering to casuals. It, it's like it's like you'll never ever be happy no matter what you get. Now, don't get me wrong, Warzone and Activision, they're shitty co companies. At the end of the day, they they've been doing some shitty shady stuff for the past few years, and but it's also our fault for just like not being happy with what we want with what we get right now. Not everyone's like this. I'm saying not everyone's like this, but the majority of us are like this, okay? And I am just getting bored of video games because of the simple little stuff. Like, I don't like Battle Royales. I've said that many times. I don't think they're fun. I think they are just a, 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 a like an addiction game where you just, you get addicted to, to the high each time, which the next episode of my podcast, which I'm going to be recording right after this, is pretty much about that high, about that addiction, okay? But... Essentially, when you're playing Battle Royals, when you're playing Warzone, it's like you, we all need more. And that's the problem. So that's why we'll never be happy is we always need more. Now, maybe I'm just old, but it's like, again, I've seen so many videos about this. Older games, you got what you got. When that disc, when that disc came out, that disc came out, that was all you got. There was no first day patch. There was no second day patch. There was no first week patch. There was no first month month patch. There was no um, 
what was hell was it called? Map packs. There was there was nothing. You got that game, and that's what you got forever. That was it until they made a second one. So until they made Call of Duty Two, Call of Duty One was the fucking same on the disc. That was it. No no patches, no fixes. There was a glitch in there. You could expose it, and you, and you could you could mess with it forever. Okay. Now technology's come a long way, which is great where we can have these patches. But the problem is, is, is I feel like that because of this technology, so many new problems have, have, have arose. And that's the issue. Now it just feels like games aren't completed because of these issues. And that's the real problem here. We do not need games that are unfinished. We need games that are finished and then we add on to, to those games. Okay? So if you, if you have a Call of Duty game... There's going to be glitches. There was always glitches in these in those finished games. I want, to, I want to let you know that. These games were did have glitches, but they were not game-breaking glitches. Like, every Call of Duty game that we've had since, like, fucking Modern Warfare 3, probably after that, have just had game-breaking glitches ever since they were able to do day one, day two, day three patches, day five patches, day, you know, whatever. First month patches. That is the problem here. I think that's the core issue with gaming now, now, nowadays is that everything is happening so fast and that these gaming companies don't actually get a chance to make something good because they're just trying to focus on creating something that's going to come out on the on the 5th of, no, of November or the 10th of November or the 20th of October. Like, it has to be done by this day. And then it's like, you, you, know, you know the other thing, too, that, that grinds my gears? I hear people talk about how, like, if a game gets delayed... It's like the end of the world. Like they're like, oh, this game sucks. Not real. It can't. You know, there are games obviously that that are not real. Like I feel like the, <laughs> which I, I, I don't know. Actually, I I, I did do a uh, an update v video on um, uh, the the day the day before. That, that's that's what it's called. That game I think is fake. But anyway, um, whenever a game gets delayed from its launch date, I feel like people just like they they just they just feel that they have to shit on it. And you're like, well, why? They're trying to make the game better on day one so that they don't have to do 60,000 patches from day one to day 10. So so why why is there so much negativity around games that get delayed? <laughs> Things miss deadlines all the time. You, you, do you think that people building a house will hit a deadline? Do you, do you think that people that, that are building a stadium for you to like watch football and you, th you think that they're like that they're not missing de deadlines? I mean, if you think that, you're fucking stupid. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm sorry. But, like, there is no such thing as you mi as you not missing a deadline. <laughs> a very small project of, you, like, you doing your homework. Like, that you shouldn't be missing deadlines. But when it comes to, like, multi-million dollar projects, multi-billion dollar projects, like, they're missing deadlines all the time. Like, I could bet you that what's happening behind the scenes that you don't see is they're creating deadlines for, like, little stuff internally. Like, okay, so... Let's say we have to have this game done by October 1st. Then they're like, okay, well, we have to have a date of, let's say, October 15th now because it's got pushed back a week or whatever. Then it's like, all right, final date for the whole public to know about, October 20th, right? Call of Duty has been doing this for so long that these dates are actually solidified. Like, we'll get a date be from these leaks, that we get because those are internal dates that they've pretty much mapped to, to, to a T. So that's why Call of Duty doesn't miss a date on, let's say, October 15th because they got it down to a science. But also, don't don't forget, they're doing day one, day two, day three, day five, day six, day 12 patches. So technically, the game ain't done, right? So technically, they should be re they should be releasing their, their games you know, for, for, further out, but they don't do it because they, they just want to get the game out. So you see the problem here. Do you see the issue? If you don't see the issue, that's fine. But what the thing is that you have to understand the issue eventually, especially if you're the one that's bitching about this kind of stuff, okay? About how bad Call of Duty is and whatever else. <laughs> now, this practice that Call of Duty's been doing could have also spoiled a lot of a lot of today's ga ga gamers. But it, it was great for us when it first started to come out, when it first started to roll out. You had to just like download stuff onto your Xbox, and they just do things straight from there. They just patch things. They You'd have a little update. It wouldn't be that bad. Now it's like a 55 gigabyte update. I've got a gigabyte of internet. It'll still take me like 20 minutes to, to download. Because it's just so much. It's like a, it's like a little. They're like, oh well, we did like five patches. You're like, okay, cool. It's like, how big is it? 150 gigs. Wow, that's a lot. What the fuck did you do? 
Did you do a complete overhaul of the game? No, we just patched like a few guns and made some shit overpowered. Oh, that's good. I'm just, I mean, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm ranting, but like still, come on. Like tell me I'm wrong though. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's like, you know, these, these companies are trying to hit these arbitrary deadlines and they're not giving a shit about the quality of the game anymore. So that's the reason why it's just never going to be, it's never going to be good. No, number, number one, N number two, it's just, it's never going to feel like it's, you're never going to get the experience again. You're never going to get the real experience of having a game finished on, on, on launch day. It's, you're never going to get that experience again. You're, you're, you're just, the, the fact of the matter is you will never get the experience of having a game be completely done on launch day. Especially if we head, if we keep heading down this path of what we're doing, of what these, all these companies are doing. It's just going to be the same shit every single time something gets released. And that is unfortunate because a lot of you young kids, a lot of you younger people will not understand what it's like to play a game on day one and have it not be completely broken. I mean, like, just as just as a as another example too that I just thought thought about. They give and I'm using Call of Duty as as, as an example, but there's plenty of games that do this. Even X Defiant is doing it. These these companies, they give these 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 streamers, these content creators early access to the game. They play the game and it's fucking broken with like less than a thousand people on the server. It's like you, what the hell do you think is gonna happen? When you release this to hundreds, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, it's going to be broken. So I like, it's like, I, I don't under, to me, it doesn't make sense why they would do that and then pretend like, oh yeah, this is, it's fine. Send it out. Don't worry. Uh, glitches. Who cares? You know? So, and, and, and then they get, and, and, and then the, the kicker is people will get upset and it's like, and then like, I see other people defending the, the, the um, the gaming companies, which is fine. But like they're like, oh well, nothing's gonna be perfect. It's like, dude, things were perfect ten years ago when we had let we had half the technology that we have now. So how are things not perfect? And I, again, I'm not trying to. I, I I'm using the word perfect as as an example. I'm not actually using the word perfect to say like, yep, no glitches, because that's not possible. Again, the glitches, the CDs that that we had, there were glitches on those games. Okay. But my point to this is that the glitches on those games and on the CDs were not as bad as the day one glitches that we're seeing or even the 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 uh, five day release prior thing that they have going on. They're not as bad as as the, as those like as the modern games. It just makes no sense to me. It's like, why in the hell do games that were made 10, 15 years ago have less glitches on launch day than a game that was made with today's technology? It doesn't make sense. It just, it's just a stupid concept to me that I cannot un under understand for the life of me. Now, maybe, again, maybe I'm old. Maybe I am being too harsh. But um, at the end of the day, it's like, this is this is the side of the argument where, I, where like, why we're never going to be ha happy again. Or why, why we'll never be happy, right? <laughs> the other side of the argument is we will bitch and moan about things that need to be changed in the game. Like, like stop, get it, get rid of slide canceling, get rid of this, get rid of that. Then they get rid of it in Warzone Two, and now we and now we hate Warzone Two because it's not fast enough. It's like, well, what what did you want exactly? You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, I talked to Average on on this. We we did this in that podcast ep episode of me and a Average for for the interview, and he said that he had a direct link to somebody, and they don't they don't listen, they don't care about what you have to say, what you really want to have changed. But the but the flip side of that coin is well. What do we actually want changed and how do they change it? Because they listen to us for, for Warzone 1 to Warzone 2, I feel like. No more fast movement, no more slide canceling. We need an actual battle royale. We need, to, we need it to be a battle royale that feels like a battle royale, not like another Call of Duty game. And they got we got that in Warzone 2 and everybody hated it. So that's the problem here. What like what do we really want? Do we want do, do, do we want more free shit? Do we want Warzone 1 squared? Because that's that's what we're getting. Like, at this point, that's, that's what we're getting. I don't know if you've noticed, right? I saw a video today of slide canceling being pretty much back in, in Warzone 2. It's, it may not be slide canceling, but it's definitely sliding. Sliding's back. So when they made, War, when they made Warzone 2 and they made Modern Warfare 2 the new one, 
you were not able to shoot while you were sliding or you had to wait like a second or two, maybe even longer after you were done sliding to start shooting. Now, pretty much mid slide, you can aim in. And then once you're, as soon as you, as soon as you've concluded sliding, as soon, like this very last second, you're done sliding, you can start shooting again. So now, are we going to bitch about that being back? Are we going to bitch about that? Because eventually now, now slide cancel is going is to come back. Somebody's going to figure it out, right? Somebody's going to figure out how, how to slide cancel. So now that's going to probably co come, come back. Are we going to be mad about that? Or are we going to be happy about that? We got our, we got our, we got our loot to, to go from being in bags that we had to like, you know, cipher through and, you know, do all this other shit to now it's, now it's vomit loot again. Are we happy about that? Are we, or are we mad? These are the questions that we all have to ask ourselves now. Are we going to be happy with the changes that they're making or are we going to be upset? Oh, well now it's Warzone 1 again. Okay, well that's that's what you've been asking for. You've been you've been asking for Warzone two to change back into Warzone one. What happened to slide canceling? What happened to vomit loot? I, I hate this new system. I hate the ADS system. I, I hate that it's so slow. Well, you want Warzone one then, right? So don't complain if you're getting exactly what you want, because then you don't even know what the hell you want after after that point. And that's the thing that I try to make people understand is that yes. You may want something new, but if you don't know the exact thing that you want that's new, then you, you can't complain about what, what they give you. Because if you're asking for faster movement, Warzone 1 had faster movement. If you're asking for better ADS time, Warzone 1 had that. If you're asking for vomit loot, Warzone 1 had that. If you're asking for um, the, the um, what the hell was it called? Um, I just lost it. It's fine, whatever. They, essentially, if you're asking for something that was from the previous game, they're just going to give you the exact copy and paste of the, of the previous game. Now, personally, I didn't like Warzone One, and I didn't, and I didn't really like Warzone Two when, when it when it came out. I still played it a bit, but it just got me off of playing ba Battle Royals because, as I said, I don't like them. So, I don't think that no matter what they do to Warzone Two, it's it's going to be fun for me to play. But I will say this. The, the the best thing about Warzone was that it didn't feel like a battle royale in the traditional sense. So they had the vomit loot, it had fast movement, you could get your load out. Like compared to Apex and Fortnite, it, it 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 was a completely different experience. Not only as far as uh movement, well obviously Apex has the movement down, but just in general, like going from PUBG to Call of Duty, way different as far as movement, as far as tactical type of you know mentality that you that you, that you, that you had to have and then the ability to um i'm trying to think of like something else really but like there there's so there's so many different things that that warzone had to offer versus something like apex or fortnite and that's okay that's what we wanted we wanted that kind of stuff we wanted something different something that didn't feel like it was just another copy of a different ba battle royale and blackout was like that too but the problem with Blackout was that it cost money. You had to buy the game to play Blackout. This is free, so this opened up to a lot wider, a larger audience. But at the end of the day, Blackout was a better map, a better game in general. Because you had to pay for it. That's the other thing, too. Nobody wants to pay for anything now nowadays. But then you want, like, the best game on, on the planet. You can't have it both ways. You can't have something that's free and then have it be the best game in the world. Which is not the way it works. How the, how the fuck are the developers going to make money? They have to make money off of getting skins. So they're going to do metas. They're going to put out new skins instead of fixing something. Because guess what? They need to use their resources to be able to make money and make, and make cash. Now, granted, Activision is making a lot of money. But, you know, if they just stop making money just to fix glitches, then where's the money going to is where's the money gonna, going, going to come from? Like, they probably have the majority of their staff working on making more money. Obviously, because of the acquisitions so that they could they could be acquired and they didn't have to worry about it and they could make a ton of money on on and out. But it's it, you know it's pretty it's a pretty simple concept when when you look at it. Like they're they're not looking at glitches and bugs because it's like how are they going to make money? Like you didn't buy the game. You all you did was you just you just you downloaded it and you're playing it now for free. The base game is free. I'm pretty sure you have to pay for the game on DMZ. 
to get it for to get like the real full game. I think there's like a different something different in DMZ. I'm not sure. I, I actually don't know to be honest. I'm not I'm not buying anything from Call of Duty pretty much anytime soon or probably at all. We'll see. I mean, I'm pretty done with I'm pretty done with Call of Duty to be honest. But I was looking yesterday and I saw on DMZ that um you'd like buy something, like buy Modern Warfare to like get something in DMZ. I, I don't I don't know what it was, but there's something you could get in DMZ for buying the game. So it's not like a, it wasn't like an emblem or anything. Like it was like actual stuff in the game. I feel like, so there's something to DMZ that's like maybe out of beta. Once you buy it, I don't know, but like playing it for free was kind of fun, you know, but it's like, they're not making any money off of me. So it's like, how, how, like imagine that now, but times like a million pe people, it's like, now they're just putting up servers to just not make any money. So <clears throat> how is that sustainable? It's not. It's like, it's like they have ads on their game that they could just make some money off of us, like just by playing their game. No, like they're legitimately just giving us free shit for nothing. So how do you think they're going to make money? They're just going to make more skins. And they're just going to make more, you know, weapon bundles and whatever else just to make money. I think, I think that's the, really the cause of it all. I really, I really think that's the cause of it all. Like we have to start spending money on games again. Like to, like, that might be it, like, because that's what the old model was. It was like you you bought a game on launch day for let's say fifty dollars or whatever, and that was their income. Then they couldn't give you anything else. They had to give you another game if they wanted to make more money. But now with the such a quick turnaround, where like you can pretty much you know get something almost instantaneously, and they could do all these patches and whatever else, and they could update the game inst instantaneously. It's like. Why bother making a good game when you could just get it out and just have people buy shit whenever they want? Like, I feel like that the see here's the here's the thing that I think a lot of you don't understand. A lot of most people that watch this channel or in general that play video games don't understand. Mobile gaming is the highest amount of like revenue per like gaming. Like there are companies out there. I don't know which ones to be honest. I mean, I think Clash of Clans is one of them. But there there are games out there. That make a million dollars a day on their game. Like a day for the company. Like not the people, but the company makes a million dollars a day, right? Or more. Like there is like a minimum requirement for the company to make a million dollars a day on, on, on a game. So think about that for a second. I think that I think that computer gaming, PC gaming, or that's PC gaming and computer gaming are, are the same thing. I think that computer gaming, Xbox, and PlayStation gaming are all trying to be turned into mobile gaming where it's instantaneous, it's fast, it's easy to get to, and you can spend a credit card as fast as you want to and as easy as you want to. That's what I think. That's why I think that the people that these gaming companies are doing this. That's why I think these, these um, console and uh, platform guys are doing what they're doing. They're trying to make it close to mobile because mobile is right in your pocket. So you can spend and do whatever you want with, with push notifications. It's a lot easier to get your attention, but with these console games and with these PC games, you don't always have your laptop in your pocket. You don't always have your PlayStation or your Xbox in your pocket. You don't cause it's too big. You can't fit in your pocket. So they're, they're trying to get it as close to mobile gaming as possible because they figured out that mobile gaming is where the real money is. So now, so now they're trying to make it as quick and fast paced as possible so that you are always willing to spend money. That's why I think it, and that's, that's what I think Warzone was a test to. It was a test to see if you'd spend all your money on the game. And guess what? A lot of it worked on, on a lot of people. Because people were just whipping their credit card. Oh, oh, oh meta, meta, meta gun. Okay, I'll just, I'll spend all my money on, I'll, I'll get it, I'll get the bundle. Oh, it's fifty dollars. Sure, I'll, I'll get fifty dollars worth. Of, yeah, as long as I get the meta, right? So they really, in reality, they, they played us at the end of the day. They played us like fiddles. Okay. Now that's the dark side of it, right? Like that's where, that's the dark side. That's the real dark side. Okay, and I think I think that's real. I mean, I don't know if it's real, but it, I think that's real. That's my opinion. Okay, it, it, the numbers show, right, and the, the the history shows it. That is what that's what's been happening. So I I think that's a hundred percent real. All right, but the point of this whole thing was that we will never be happy, and I don't think we'll ever be happy because of all these different factors that that, that I've talked about, and the core problem 
with why we'll never be happy is because we'll never be happy with with what they with what we get. No matter what, no matter what we get, no matter no matter how extravagant that thing is, we will never be happy with it. And that just just to let you know, that reflects in your real life too. That doesn't just reflect in a video game. That doesn't just reflect in like your your professional life. Like that reflects in all areas of your life. So if you're never happy with a Call of Duty game, and you just keep buying the game, it's never going to get any better. So stop buying the game. Because it's never going to get any better. Because they're if you just keep buying it, they're not going to change anything from it. Okay? I've talked about this, I've bitched about this many times. But if you are bitching about movement not being good enough in Warzone 2, and then they give you Warzone 1 movement or something close to it, and then you bitch about it, what's the point? Stop playing the game. If you're never going to be happy with it, stop playing it. <laughs> and it's like it's. I know. I, I know. I shouldn't have to say this because it just feels so like you know. But I, I, I went through this myself. Like I played the games, and I'm like, oh, next time will be better. Or this. Why does this suck? Why does this suck? But like, I caught myself one time, and I, I'll tell this story. I caught myself one time playing. I think it was Modern Warfare 2019. I think I've told this story before, but I caught myself playing Mo Modern Warfare 20 2019. I, I shot somebody like seven or eight times, maybe more. And this gun is a four or five shot kill. I don't know. I don't remember what the hell gun it was. I'm pretty sure it was a submachine gun. Most submachine guns are like four or five shot kill. I drilled almost 10 shots into this guy. I die. And I was like, okay, again, not the same guy, different people. This is happening all game. Same thing happening. Ten shots, dead. Ten shots, dead. I would just I, every time I was just I was getting an abnormal amount of hit markers. I was just hearing the <laughs> in my headset of me just drilling somebody and not getting a kill. Right. Then it's like prior to that, pri game or two prior to that or whatever, I was just dr three shotting people to like the chest, three three four shots. Pop 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 dead. Pop 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 dead. Pop, like I was dropping entire teams. Okay. Now all of a sudden I can't get a fucking kill. So, either it's net code that's the problem, or it's that stupid hit detection issue that they have where, you know, not, not actually, that's one issue, but they have the um, skill-based hit detection that people are talking about. I don't know if Call of Duty has skill-based hit, hit detection, but from my games that I've been playing, it sounded, it felt like I had that against me, okay? So, that's, that's, that is, that's another thing, too. I caught myself in that moment, and I said... A game or two ago, I was shredding teams with a like with less than five rounds. Now all of a sudden, I'm putting a quarter of my thirty round mag in, into or a third of, of my thirty round mag into somebody, and I'm and I'm getting and I'm getting dropped like like, like a bowling ball. So why is that? And it, and I and I started to pay attention when I was playing to what was happening. So it's like four or five, six games. I would just get demolished, even though like we'd win maybe or something, but I would be like negative, right? And then I would play another, and I'd play like a sixth or a seventh game or maybe an eighth game, and I just shred. I, I no matter what gun I would use, I, I could use I could use a sniper rifle, and I'd be hitting ten feet next to somebody and getting a kill. Whereas like there are, there are some games where I'm using a sniper rifle, I'm just drilling somebody in the throat. I'm watching the bullet go into their throat, into their head, into their chest. No hit markers or just a hit marker. I'm hitting people in the toe at full health on some games, and I'm and, and I'm getting a one shot kill. So I, I realized that there is some kind of algorithm going on that's that's letting that's making you want to play the game for longer. And that's where I that I made a video about this a while ago, and Wildcat said this a while ago. Games are just algorithms now, and they are. They're trying to get you to play as long as possible. That's all they're doing. It's like social media. They're trying to get you to stay on it as long as possible. That's all they're trying to do. They need your attention. Your attention is money. That's what it is. Think about it like, like that. So if you're on there and you're a casual gamer, you're better off than, than if you're a hardcore gamer that wants to do whatever and spend money and be a streamer and spend money. They got you. But I've stopped. I, I don't care anymore. Like I don't want to play. I don't want to be the best Call of Duty player anymore because I know I'm not going to be the best. When I was younger, I was very good. I was very good. We we competed in game battles. Like we we did it. Like we were there. Like we were the dicks back then. We were the ones that bullied people. We we we, we were the people in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 that used to spawn kill 
and camp spawns and, and never let anyone out, 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 out of their spawns because we knew all the spawn points. We knew exactly where everybody was going to come from before they even knew they were going that, that way. We had everything on lockdown. That was the fun times. But when you get older, a lot of times you just don't give a shit anymore. And that's what I think it is too. So don't bother wasting your time on the game. Because I, again, I caught myself and I realized this is a waste of my fucking time. So I realized too that I will never be happy with what they, with, with what they send out. Modern Warfare 2, in my opinion, Modern Warfare 3, that era was the, was the peak. I liked Black Ops 3, but it was Black Ops 3 zombies that I really liked. I didn't like Black Ops 3 online. Cold War zombies was fun, but like the peak of Call of Duty for me is was Modern Warfare 2. And I know for some of you that are younger than me, it was probably Black Ops 2. And then the people that are younger than you, maybe it was Warzone. That that was the peak of Call of Duty. So that my point is that there's always going to be a peak no, in w depending on what age group you're you're in. There's always going to be a peak of Call of Duty no matter what age group you're in. So for me, it was Modern Warfare 2. For you, it might be Black Ops 2. For your kids or for kids that are younger than you, it might be Warzone. Next, it'll be Black Ops 2 re re Remastered. You know, you never know. That's So that's what I'm trying to say. It's like there's going to be times where there's going to be the peak. So I'm done playing. I'm pretty, I've, I've had my fill of fun. I played a lot of Call of Duties after Modern Warfare 2, and, and they just they just didn't hit every time. They were always worse every iteration that, that they went through. It was, it was always worse. So I'm done. I'm good. I've had my fill. I will never be happy with, with, with what they make. I've, I'm man enough, I'm adult enough to, to admit that. Okay? But in general, if you're sitting there complaining about movement, about this, about that, and you still play the game, then you'll never be happy with, with what they will make no matter what they make no matter if there's jetpacks if it's boots on the ground no matter what the actual call of duty is going to be you're never going to be happy with it i can tell you right now it's going to be you're not going to be happy no, no matter what you do okay that's my pep talk for the day <laughs> i'm not trying to sound ne ne negative what, what i'm trying to really do is i'm trying to get you to understand that you have to like look at you know, look at yourself and look at what's happening around you and actually understand what, you know, what you can do to change things and change things for the better, okay? This game, this next game is going to be either Modern Warfare 3 or it's going to be Advanced Warfare. And I think it's Modern Warfare 3. I've already seen a couple of leaks on it, so it's probably going to be Modern Warfare 3, boots on the ground. And I can assure you, it's not going to be any better than, than Modern Warfare 2. Because if they hit, if they missed with this game, then they're not gonna they're not gonna hit with with with, with Modern Warfare Three Remastered or a different Modern Warfare Three. The campaign's good. There's certain things that are good. I'm not saying the whole game is trash, but the overall, if you look at it from a different perspective, from from an overall perspective, the game is not good. Modern Warfare Two 2022 is not better than Modern Warfare Two the first one. As much as I, as much as I would hate to say it, Modern Warfare Two, if they made that today, the first one, we probably would all hate it. But like back then, it's like the noob tubes in one man army was so much fun. I didn't even care after a certain point it was being done to me. I just did it back because it was fun. Gaming also back then I think was less of a of like this challenge phase of like being like my career like that's what a lot of people think that like gaming is a career now so it's like it's not fun anymore it's, it's just to be the best at something and it's like well that's not fun and that's not why games were developed in the first place they were developed so that people could come home have fun or in their spare time have fun not to like make it a job and make millions of dollars you know like i like content creators that sit there and play games that they enjoy not because it makes the money or whatever. That's that's what you need to find whenever you're watching somebody. Because that, that's a good role model to find. Is to find some. I'm not saying it's me. I'm saying you need to find somebody that will be willing to play a game because it's fun. Not because it makes them, them money. I've talked about this many times. That is the sole thing that you should be finding right now. In today's society. Today's network. Okay. Because if you don't. You're just going to get sucked into like the, I want to be the best Call of Duty player out there. It's like, you're never going to be the best. You'll be up there, but the best 
a lot of the best people in something either have a born talent that they practice and that they mold over time. Okay? Somebody's natural at something. So you might be natural at, let's say, math, but you want to become a Call of Duty pro. That's not really your real passion. What you have to find is you have to, you have to find something that you're naturally good at and then you pursue it. And you do very good. And you study it. You do it. You 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 triple down on it. And you do as the best you can. Talent will only get you so so far. Okay. What's the what's the guy's name? Also, I also have to show you that that video. What the hell's the guy's name? That like is really good. Is it Scump? I think I think it's Scump. I, I might be no, it's not Scump. Um. Oh, let me let me look at it. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, I forgot his name. What the hell's his name? Um, let me go to YouTube real quick. Oh, you know what? You know what? Hold on. Um, best Call of Duty player of all time. It's Shroud. That's his name. Shroud. Okay. If you're so Shroud is one of the examples of he's just naturally really good at video games, and we'll 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 pick up a picture of him right right here. So this is Shroud. Shroud is one of the best video game players on the planet, okay? Naturally. He has a natural talent to being good at video games. Now, he practices his ass off and he plays all the time to get very good at what he does. But Shroud is the best at what he does because he has a natural born talent at it, okay? There are other people that are very good too, but they still have to practice. But if... You're not into it and you don't have a natural... Like, if your reaction time is shit, you cannot train yourself to have a better reaction time. You you can, but it's it's only going to be so good. Whereas Shroud naturally has, like, let's say, like a, one, a five millisecond reaction time, right? Whereas you have a 25, you can train yourself to five, but Shroud can train himself to .01 seconds. That's my point. Now, I'm not trying to say don't go out and go become... The best gaming out there, but I can tell you it's going to be a fucking hard ass journey to, to do that. And I and I want to create the least amount of traction, least amount of tension as possible for for you guys. So being shroud, you could go after becoming the best gaming out the get best gaming player out there. Don't get me wrong, practice can make can go a long way, but it does help to have a natural talent at at, at, at something. So let's take let's take a look at this video too that I wanted to show you as well. This is uh. Uh, let's see. I'm going to open this. Go here. So this, this is the video that sparked this idea for this, this podcast. Call of Duty, what exactly are you doing? Season 4 Reloaded brought a boys collab and superpowers as field upgrade. Yes, you heard me right. Superpowers. You can electrocute somebody, super jump, and even use laser beams like Superman. I don't know about you, but this is kind of reminding me of Prime Fortnite. They had a great game, but decided to add things that people absolutely hated. For example, remember the mechs? This caused so many people to quit the game entirely because of how overpowered they were. You can make it to the end circle and run into one of these and just lose. The mechs! Why the f*** are they a Dude, I'm not playing anymore, bro. I'm off this game. I'm all for having fun in video games, but this should be a limited time mode and not be able to ruin someone's resurgence game. Also, I thought we were going for realism in Warzone 2. That was the reason for no slide canceling, no cancel reload, no bunny hopping, slow ADS times, and super fast TTK. But I guess that's out the window. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Call of Duty. That was another thing, too, that, that, I, that, that I was going to mention was that uh, re the reload canceling too. That that was in Warzone two. Everybody bitched about that, but it's like, all right, well now reload canceling is back in. Now it's back to Warzone one. I mean, obviously there's reload canceling in a lot of Call of Duties prior, but every time they've implemented that, I feel like that it's all they've done it multiple times, and I feel like it just never hit. So it's like I don't know why they don't learn their lesson. Um, but you know, and they also added that cat skin too. It's like. Why? It's like, that's the thing. Why would you do that? Why is that a thing? Please stop doing that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I don't want this podcast to sound ranty, but that's pretty much what I felt like it sounded like. 
But at the end of the day, you need to make yourself a promise that you will always think of yourself and you will always think of where your limitations are. Not physically, not for like success or whatever, but just for like in general for gaming. Because gaming is just getting to the point where they're just looking to take money from you. They're not actually looking to create a good game that's going to last a long time. They're looking for quick money and they're, and they're looking for it now. That's what I made the example before of them trying to bring PC gaming and console gaming into the mobile gaming universe and, and the space. Because mobile gaming is very fast paced and people spend money like crazy. Now... Transactions are a lot smaller there, but you can also spend a lot more money on mobile gaming because the transactions are smaller versus the PC and 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 the the, the console gaming. So let me let let me think let, let me have you think about this this la this final this fi this final thought. Next step might be for PC and console. They they might start doing microtransactions that are similar to mobile. They've already started it. Those little packs and whatever else, like the little packs that you were able to open and buy for like, let's say like a dollar or two. Like you could you could rack up hundreds of dollars very quickly spending a dollar or two on each one of those packs or whatever. Now CSGO did, did that. Advanced Warfare had that. Like there's a lot of stuff that had that. So just be aware that in the next five to 10 years, you're going to start seeing smaller transaction amounts, but but know that they're trying to bring you into a mobile state where you can just spend a little bit of, oh yeah, it's only a dollar. Oh, it's only a dollar. It's only 99 cents, only five cents, only 10 cents, but they're going to keep doing that. And it's going to keep racking up on your credit card. And eventually you're not going to realize that you're, you're, 100, you're 200, 500, 600, $1,000 deep into a game that you hate.